now from South Seminole Academy in Castleberry, Florida. Direct from the third floor of building number three, this is South Seminole News. Trevor. And I'm Maddie. Since the first nine weeks exams have ended, here we are here to list five things you should do this weekend. Number, number five. five. The beach. You should go to the beach because it's a perfect time to relax and spend with your family and Number friends. Number four. Play Minecraft. Minecraft could be a perfect way to pass time and relax as well. Number, Number three. three. Watch anime to know all about the great TV details Amelia is talking about on the Friday show. Number, Number two, two, make TikToks. TikTok, TikTok has basically taken over, so this would be a great way to have fun, especially with friends. Number, Number one, one, to play Sims 4. You get to make your own characters and live your own lives. All, All right. right, that's it from us today, but don't, don't forget, forget to storm. storm. South Seminole Academy now uses a school-wide identification badge system for our students. Students must wear their photo ID badge at all times while on campus. This has been added as an additional safety measure for our students and staff. It is a quick way for staff to identify individuals on our campus. We are working with our Red Apple Cafe to implement a system for students to use the ID badge to purchase food items, which provides an additional security measure for student accounts. This will also help expedite transactions, giving students more time to enjoy their lunch. Students will be required to present their ID badge for admission into any extracurricular campus activities, such as dances and sporting events. ID badges are considered part of the school uniform. Therefore, not wearing the ID badge will result in discipline consequences. Thank you, and don't forget to storm. Welcome everybody to our Friday show. Today we will be focusing on The Amazing Spider-Man 2. We're going to start off with the cast of this movie. First off the list, Spider-Man was portrayed by Andrew Garfield. Other cast members are Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy, Jamie Foxx as Electro, Dan DeHaan as Harry Osborn, Sally Fields as Aunt May, Paul Gamati as the Rhino, and so many more talented people worked on this movie. Getting into the plot of the movie, Peter Parker embraces his new role as a hero and spends time with Gwen Stacy in between protecting New York from criminals. However, his greatest battle is yet to begin with the emergence of Electro. Peter must confront an enemy far more powerful than he is. The plot of this movie was a little overdone. They had too many ideas to fit into one movie, but instead of making one movie for each of these ideas, they crammed them all together, which made this movie a little overbearing instead of if they would have made it a trilogy. Our next segment is the villains of this movie, including Electro as, or the Rhino, Harry Osborn, aka Goblin. These villains contribute to the fact that we didn't like this movie as much as the other Spider-Man movies. The Rhino and Electro specifically dragged this movie down. Now for the hero of this movie, Spider-Man, portrayed by Andrew Garfield, who played an awesome Spider-Man but not so much Peter Parker. Well, that's all we're doing for today. Make sure to watch us next week to see us talk about The Amazing Spider-Man. Bye. Bye. What's up and welcome back. My name is Richie and here's Linwood. Let's get <laughs> Let's get going with week seven picks. So first, we got the 49ers and the Redskins. 49ers are really good right now. They're like really, really good. And Washington is just, I thought they would be good this year after a really good draft, but this year has just been really bad for them. I think the 49ers will come out on top with a big win and beat the 49ers 35 to six. Our next game is the Cards. Cardinals and the Giants. Linwood, what do you think is going to happen in this one? I think the Cardinals will win 17-13 against the Giants. Cardinals' defense has been looking pretty good lately. And the Giants, they just haven't been as good as we think, thought they would have been. Next, we got Ravens versus Seahawks. What do you think about this? I don't, I don't know. This one's going to be kind of tough. The Ravens and the Seahawks, they're both really good right now. Uh, 
Ravens let out with Lamar Jackson. They're going into this one. I think they lost last week, but they're still a very good football team. And the Seahawks, they're a Super Bowl team to me right now, and I think that they're going to do something really big this year. Might make a run for the bowl. But I have them winning this one 34-28 to 28 in overtime. Next, we got the Saints and the Bears. Who do you got, Leonard? I got Saints winning this one 20 to 10. The Chicago Bears haven't had the season that we hoped that they had after the missed field goal last year in the playoffs. The Saints have been looking good with their backup quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater. Next, we got Eagles versus Cowboys, the game of the week. What do you think, Richie? I don't know, man. The Cowboys are just – I want the Cowboys to win a lot of games this year, and I thought they were going to be a Super Bowl team. But their last win this year was week three against Miami, and everybody's beating Miami, so that's not really special. But they could win this game if they just stick to the game plan and feed the ball to Zeke and be safe with the football. They looked really good last week, but couldn't get it good. They couldn't get it done against the Jets, which is weird. And it's the Eagles. They're a really good football team, but I don't think Carson Wentz could get it done under the lights on Sunday Night Football. What about you? What do you think will happen in this one? I think the Cowboys' defense will play good this game. The Eagles have been playing pretty decent, but not as good. The Cowboys have been doing the same thing, but I had the Cowboys winning 16 to 10. All right, that's good. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Grace. And I'm Ava. Today, we're going to be rating the best and the worst chicken nuggets. In fourth place is Burger King Nuggets because their nuggets are too soft for us and I would say that they're kind of dry. In third place is Wendy's Nuggets. Wendy's Nuggets are okay. They have a nice crunch, but I think Wendy's Nuggets are not the best nuggets. In second place is McDonald's Nuggets because their nuggets are kind of soft, but they have a lot of flavor. In first, in first place, place is Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A Chick Nuggets are nice. They have a lot of flavor and are crispy. And we will be back next week talk, rating different ice cream flavors. And don't, don't forget, forget to eat chicken! Welcome back, Hurricanes. I'm Trevor here with your top 10 songs today. Just so you know, I started this list because I love mu music. Now moving on, let's get to the list. Number one song today is Highest in the Room by Travis Scott and has been on the charts for one week. And... This week since this song has only been on the this list for one week I don't know it so anyways moving on number two song today is truth hurts by Lizzo and has been on the charts for 23 weeks and takes her second place for the most weeks on the top 10 songs this week I love this song period number three song today is Senorita by Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello and it has been on the charts for 16 weeks I like this song, but it gets a little annoying all the time. Number four song today is 10,000 Hours and has been on the charts for one week. I have not listened to this song either. But number five song is Someone You Love by Louis Capaldi and has been on the charts for 22 weeks and takes a third place on top 10 songs list this week. This is probably my personal favorite on the list. Number six song is Circles by Post Malone and has been on the charts for only six weeks, sadly. Now I have listened to this song only once, but not a fan for it. I love Post Malone, though. Number seven song is No Guidance by Chris Brown featuring Drake and has been on the charts for six weeks. This is another song that I have never listened to because I do not like Chris Brown, but maybe later I will listen to it. Number eight song is Ransom by Lil Tecca and has been on the charts for 19 weeks. Uh, sadly, I personally do not know th about this song. Uh, I might listen to it soon. Number five, nine song is Bad Guy by Billie Eilish and has been on the charts for 28 weeks. And takes our first, pl takes first place this week on our top 10 songs list. Also, this artist is going on a world tour and, so and sometime next year is coming to the Amway Center. So make sure to get your tickets because she is a sensation. 
Number 10 song is Panini by Lil Nas X and has been on the charts for 16 weeks. But it's pretty famous on TikTok for all the memes that have been created out of it. But anyways, thanks for watching. I am Trevor with your top 10 songs this week. See you next week on the Friday show. Also, we have a hidden lighthouse somewhere on the screen. Hopefully you can find it. But bye. Oh, and remember, don't forget to listen to those songs. Today's Friday show topic is Biz JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is an anime and manga that is split into parts. There are currently eight parts. It is, it is about, it's a, fam about a, a family that are called the Joe Stars, and each other's son and the family uses different ways to defeat vampires, and each part stars a new JoJo, which is the name of the f main character. Uh, my top five things, my favorite things about it. Number five, the various different things that are used to defeat the various vampires, like Stans and Hamon. Number four, the Joe, the Joe stars that are from part one, two, and three. My favorite one is Joseph Joe Star. Number three, the intros to each different part, since they are all flashy and the songs work perfectly with them. Number two, the action scenes where they battle against the vampires using each Herman and or stands. Number one, all the memes that have emerged from it. All you have to do to find them is search up JoJo's Bizarre Adventure memes. Okay, and that's all for today. Bye. I'm back. Hi guys. Hi guys. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Friday, Friday show. show. I'm Grace. And I'm Colin. Today we are going to be talking about the history of hamburgers. The inspiration came from the word Hamburg and was started in the 19th century. It was from German Hamburg cows was minced and combined with garlic, onion, salt, and pepper then formed into patties. After they were formed into patties they didn't have buns so they were made into hamburgs, hamburger steaks. The way, how, the way that they got famous was by their beef patties. Come back next week to learn about pizza. Bye! Welcome back, Hurricanes. This is Chloe. And that's Michaela. And welcome back to the Friday Dance Show. The Macarena was super fun, but we have a new dance to teach you. What dance? The Cupid Shuffle, of course. Oh, well, let's get started then. Before we start, though, we, want, we wanted to let you know that we are going to make smaller movements due to space. But that's okay. Step one, take the four steps to your right. Now take four steps to your left to get back to the same position. So now we have four kicks to the front. I thought this was dance, not kung fu or karate. Whoa, 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 Michaela. Don't worry, it's just the next step. Settle back. <laughs> now that I'm safe, let's continue. There's a turn next, but you know, spatial issues. issues. Practice time. With the dance, not kung fu. <laughs> Don't forget to storm. Hi, my name is Alyssa. And my name is Maggie. And today we are telling you guys about Help the Bahamas. South Seminole Academy is coming together to donate items to the Bahamas after a tragic experience with Hurricane Dorian. In your first period classes, there will be boxes for you to put the items in. The items consist of... Water, canned foods, clothes of all sizes, blankets, first aid supplies, batteries, and any light source like flashlights. We will be collecting items till the end of the month, and then we'll be sending them off to the Bahamas. Also, keep posted for the GoFundMe page if you would like to make a monetary donation. South Seminole Academy is trying to make a big contribution to the Bahamas, and we will appreciate all support. All this information will be on our Instagram page so you can always look back. We thank you guys for your time and hope that you can help the Bahamas. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Friday Show. I'm Kenny from Dinosaur of the Week. Today we have the Velociraptor. The Velociraptor was a small and swift predator that lived in Mongolia in the Cretaceous period. Its name means swift Caesar in Latin. Well, that's all for today. See you next time and don't forget the storm.
signs that you are an otaku. Anime night. How can you say no to a night binge session with some of your fellow buddies watching Kana from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid doing her thing? You may not realize it, but you've just blown through 14 episodes in one sitting. The sun is coming up and your little stash of juice boxes you've stored away in your mini fridge is depleted. Oh well, bathroom break. You secretly wish the world worked that way. You're re-watching Attack on Titan Junior High for the 10th time this year, and you secretly wish that there were ODM gear that would do your bidding and that you would have the ability to help you when cleaning the wall during club is necessary. You get incredibly excited when a new episode comes out. You will forget classes to watch the new episode of Attack on Titan even though you know it's a little gory. Or you will download the in to entire seasons and binge watch them. Your friend just recommended you Meiji Toko Ren Renka. You will download all episodes instead of just one. Your mantra, if you start it, you have to finish it. You own at least one poster or figure. Come on, fess up. You have one or more songs from an anime you like. Not gonna lie, some songs are pretty bomb. You talk smack about dubbed versions and watch it in the original Japanese. And of course, you watch it with subtitles and don't really pick up in the language. Just little bits here and there. Dubbed is lame, you will say. It doesn't sound right. And you know what? It's true. But on the flip side, the manga version is so much better. Anime t-shirts. You in a Wings of Freedom t-shirt. You stick out like a sore thumb. You collect everything about the anime. You see this Gundam? It's not all there is. There's this, and this, and this, and this too. And this. You need all of these. And pillows? Yes. You complain about filler episodes, but you watch them anyways. You wish animals could talk. Uh, Inukan, please talk to me. I'm lonely. You have your own victory pose. You know that stance you assume when you are on the dance floor? They are anime, not cartoons. Bye! Bye. Hello everyone, my name is Nicola and welcome to the Friday Show. Today I'll be talking about my top five favorite dinosaurs. Number five, the Brontosaurus, because his neck is too long but his name is really cool. Number four is going to be the Pterodactyl because he can fly but I can't spell his name. Other than that, he is also cool. Number three, the T-Rex because he's a less cooler version than number two. Number two is the Giga. It's a more cooler version than the T-Rex. And for the moment you've been waiting for, number one, Dinosaur Chicken Nuggets. It is hands down the best dinosaur because it tastes the best and also because all the other ones are dead. That's why we can't taste them. I'm Nicola, and thank you for watching my Friday show. See you next week. If you have ever seen eye to eye with a goat, you may have noticed something different. Some people may even find their gaze outright unsettling. That's because the goat's pupils are horizontal, not circulars like ours, or vertical like a cat's. According to scientists at the University of California, vertically, the shape of goat's pupils can be traced back to their place in the food chain. Goats are herbivores and need to be able to protect themselves when a predator comes along. A broad line of sight aided by wide rectangular shaped pupils allow them to see danger approaching from their peripheral vision. Their eyes also have a remarkable ability to rotate in the head to maintain parallelism with the ground, says Martin Banks, the lead researcher on the University of California study. This means that when goats bend their head down to graze, their eyes stay level with the horizon horizon, allowing them an even better view of encroaching danger. Did you know that shrimps have their he hearts located in their head? For shrimps, having organs located in the head is much more advantageous and safer than having them located in the tail part. That's because the ceophilic portion is covered with thick, with thick protective substances. It's more safer to protect their internal organ. Also, the shrimp's heart located in its head has three parts of the heart entrances. Through the, these entrances, blood comes through the heart, the, comes through the heart. The arteries extend from many directions. 
The good news is that you can be immortal. The bad news is that you have to become a floating blob of jelly to do so. Scientists have discovered a jellyfish which can live forever. The secret to eternal life, as it turns out, is not just living a really, really long time. It's all about maturity, or rather the lack of it. It turns out that once the adult form of the 4.5 millimeter wide species Tyropodus dorni have reproduced, they don't die but transform themselves back into their juvenile polyp state. Their tentacles react, their bodies shrink, and they sink to the ocean floor and start the cycle all over again. Among laboratory samples, all the adult Tyropodus have observed regularly undergo this change. And not just once, they can do it over and over again. Giraffes mostly eat fresh leaves and twigs from the top of trees where other browsing species can't reach them. That means giraffes can afford to be pickier than most big animals and they're also better, better able to cope with droughts than smaller animals as the tallest trees tend to have the deepest roots that reach down to water that other trees can't access. But you might be more surprised to discover that the seemingly gentle giraffes also eat bones. Giraffes aren't predators, so they don't kill other animals, but their huge skeletons require more calcium and phosphorus than they can get from a strictly vegetarian diet. The easy solution is to chew the bones from carcasses to make their own bones stronger, a behavior known as osteophagy. Flamingos are pink on the inside, too. These flamboyant birds are adapted to collecting and metabolize carotenoid pigments, the chemicals found in algae, crust crustins, and microscopic plant ma materials that form tones of orange, red, yellow, and pink. So the pink coloration is most obvious in the flamingo's plumage. The carotenoids spread a lot further. Flamingo's skin is pink and a flamingo's blood is pink. But popular claims that flamingo's eggs, or even the flamingo's eggs yolk, is pink are completely untrue, and any photos showing it have been photoshopped. Flamingos are among a select few birds that feed their young directly from secretion, secretion produced in their, crop, in their crop, and this crop milk is bright pink. The male platypus has a spur on either hind foot that it cre excretes venom. Though females are also born with the spurs, they fall off before adulthood. Aside from the other two mammals, certain species of shrew and solandons harboring venom is a trait usually pre reserved for reptiles and amphibians. Put all these traits together and what do you have? An animal that straddles three classes, mammal, bird, and reptile. But why would the male platypus need venom? The red relatively docile animal has few predators, which include carpet snakes, eels, and foxes, and doesn't need the toxin for hunting. The only probable explanation that researchers have may come up with is that males use it offensively during mate competition. In fact, the male platypus produces venom mostly during the spring, which happens, just happens to be when the platypus couples breed. Apparently, the venom isn't meant to kill other males, only to provide for a rousing fight. They cannot kill humans, but can cause swelling and pain that can last for weeks. Thanks for watching. Hey, we're back. Today we decided to put If I Could Tell Her from Dear Evan Hansen into Google Translate. We translated it from English to Italian to Latin to Spanish to Luxembourgish and then back to English and it came out a little wonky. We don't own this song, Dear Evan Hansen, or the instrumental. So here we go. Found it fantastic. And I thought they would be good, brother. Sure. What? of laughing I knew every time you get bored scared by the ends of pants sleeves show off compliance with the list what I saw in dressing now 
magazine. About you? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to you at any moment. No, no, no. It's not just nothing. And no, man, he said many things. He says, I just try the best I can to remember. Um, such layered fashion, beautiful and stripes. 